Hello Light Family and welcome. This is, the, this is the finale of our Holy Week series. So alam ko marami tayong natutunan ngayong linggo. No? Mas naintindihan natin yung pagmamahal ng Lord sa bawat isa. No, kahit po ako, yes ako yung nagsishare. But as I prepare for this message, as I prepare for this uh, series of preachings, the Lord really ministered unto me. No, grabe po ang presensya ng Panginoon. At sabi ko nga, marami na tayong natutunan uh, this week. But the message tonight is also really important in our lives. But before that, before we begin, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this series. We want to glorify you, O God. We want to honor you, O God. Salamat, Panginoon, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your greatness. And Father, as we listen into this message, the message of the resurrection, may we hear this with utmost reverence and with the fear of the Lord, and also with a delightful heart. Tonight will be a celebration of your resurrection. May we have it in our hearts that we will be continually thankful for everything that you've done for us. Salamat, Panginoon. May we invite your holy presence in our midst, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight, again, kasi sabi ko nga kanina, we will talk about the resurrection of Christ. Bago po yan, ano po kaya ang unang ginagawa natin kapag tayo nakaka-receive ng magandang balita o ng good news? No, Funding testimony lang at praise report na rin. Last, last Friday, nung March 26, I think, no, meron po akong, uh, meron akong schedule sa office. So, papunta na, uh, naka, na, nakaayos na ako noon, prepared na ako, at papunta na sa office. Then, nakareceive ako ng message from my brother and my brother-in-law. Actually, uh, same message, same picture sila ng sinend. A picture po nung aming, uh, nung aking pamangkin. Nanganak yung sister ko. Then, Ayun, sinan nila sa akin yung picture ng pamangkin namin. Pamangkin ko. Then, alam niyo po ba kung ano yung unang-unang ginawa ko right after I receive uh, that, me- that message? No? So, so, sobrang saya. Hindi ko ma-explain yung, yung pakiramdam. No, sobrang saya ng family namin. Siyempre, uh, healthy si baby, then safe din yung kapatid ko. At siya kasi yung unang uh, apo ni mami at ni daddy. So, ang unang-unang ginawa ko po, syempre, nag-pray ako, nagpasalamat ako kay Lord. And uh, I remember, nag-worship din ako during that time. Ang, ang pinatugtog ko pa nga nakanta is Good Good Father ni Chris Tomlin. So, grabe po kasi ang, ang kabutihan ng ating Panginoon. No? At after that, no, syempre, syempre, pumasok na. Next na ginawa ko naman ko, shiner, ginawa ko naman is shiner ko sa Facebook. Sempre, ganun po talaga yung ano eh. Ganun po talaga yung mga tao. Ganun po talaga tayo. Whenever we receive a good news, parang normal sa atin that we want to share it to other people. Tama po ba? And I think there's nothing wrong about it. Like for example, pumasa ka or or pumasa ka sa board exam. No, pinopost mo yung uh, yung list na nandun yung name mo sa mga pumasa. Or naka-graduate ka pinopost mo yung graduation picture mo. Or sa iba naman, nagkaroon ng, uh, nagka-in a relationship, no? nagkaroon ng girlfriend, nagkaroon ng boyfriend, na binabago yung status sa Facebook. Agaya po nung dalawa kong kaibigan na recently lang ay naging sila. Normal po kasi sa tao that whenever we receive a good news, we want to spread it to other people. We want other people to know about this good news. Now, bakit ko po ito sinishare? Ganyan din po yung Uh, ganyan din po yung magiging approach natin sa message ng Lord sa atin tonight. No, sa message ng resurrection. Amen po. So, bago po pumunta dun sa pinaka uh, topic, no, balikan muna natin ano yung nangyari dun sa cross. No, after Jesus died on the cross, ang nangyari po, the earth shook. No, nagkaroon ng lindol and the veil of the temple was torn down from top to bottom. Ano po yung significance nito? Bakit mahalaga na yung veil or yung parang kurtina in the temple ay nahati from top to bottom? 
That means po kasi, that symbolizes that now we have an access to God. We can now approach God. No, nung uh, bigaw po kayo ng konting background, sa Old Testament po kasi, yung mga Israelites, hindi sila basta-basta nakakalapit sa presensya ng Lord. No, so, dun sa tabernacle, dun sa the most holy place, hindi sila basta-basta nakakalapit doon. Actually, the high priest lang ang pwedeng pumunta doon at once a year lang. Iisang tao lang at once a year lang pwedeng pumasok doon sa loob. Kapag ikaw, wala, kapag ikaw wala kang authority na pumunta doon sa loob, mamamatay ka. So that veil symbolizes yung uh, after, the, after the cross, no, after namatay ni Jesus sa cross, that veil was torn down. That symbolizes that now we can approach God. That we can now come to our Father. No? So ano po yung nangyari after that? After that, Joseph of Arimathea, this is one of the disciples of Christ, not one of the twelve, but one of his followers. So he asked for the body of Christ. So he asked for the permission kay Pilate na kung pwede niyang kunin yung katawan ni Christ at i-prepare na para mailagay sa tomb. Kinabukasan po kasi is Sabbath, so hindi niya pwedeng gawin yung kinabukasan. Dalawang bagay po kasi ang ginagawa ng mga tao during the Sabbath. It's, you, they worship and they rest. So before the Sabbath, uh, si Joseph Parimatia, ginawa niya, hiningi niya yung body ni Christ alongside with, uh, with Nicodemus and they made the necessary preparations and laid the body of Christ at the tomb na pagmamayari niya. So ano po yung nangyari pa after that? Yung mga chief priests, hindi pa nakontento. Ang ginawa nila, lumapit din sila kay, ano, kay, uh, kay Pontius Pilate. Tapos sinabi nila, sabi kasi ni Christ, no? ito yung sabi ni Christ, after three days, I will rise. I think hindi naman sila naniniwala doon na after three days talaga mabubuhay si Christ. Pero ang thinking nila, baka itong mga disciples ni Christ, yung mga followers niya, nakawin yung katawan at ipag, ano eh, ipag, ipagkalat yung, uh, yung balita na nabuhay nga si Christ. So they were worried na gumawa sila ng ano ng false news no na na fake ng fake news para uh, para maniwala na si Christ ay Lord. So anong nangyari next? Dito na po tayo sa Matthew chapter 28 verse 1. Now after the Sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. So yun nga after the Sabbath Etong si Mary Magdalene with other women ay pumunta dun sa o papunta dun sa tomb para dalawin yung katawan ni Christ. At this point there were, there was no sign na magkakaroon ng mabubuhay na si Christ. And even the disciples there was no sign of this of the disciples of Christ. Kaya ang, ang ginawa kasi nila nung ipapako na si Christ sa cross No, nagpakalayo-layo sila, nagtago sila, thinking siguro natatakot sila na baka sa kanila naman maibaling. O sila naman yung uh, maparusahan din. So si Mary pumunta dun sa tomb. At actually habang papunta sila, they were worried. Sino yung, kasi mga babae sila eh, sino yung magtutulak nung stone? Yung tomb po kasi na pinaglibingan kay Christ, ay merong nakaharang na stone sa harapan. No? At hindi lang yon, merong mga gwardya. So they were thinking, sino yung, mag, sino yung magtutulak ng stone? Baka payagan nga tayo na makita si Christ, hindi naman natin kayang itulak yung stone. Next, in verse 2, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat on it, His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Sabi doon, behold, there was a great earthquake. Doon po sa cross, nagkaroon din ng earthquake. Dito sa resurrection, nagkaroon ng another earthquake. Bakit? Kasi dumating yung, yung angel ni God. Para ano? Para anong gawin? Yung kaninang question ni Mary Magdalene na sino yung ano, sino yung magtutulak ng stone? 
No? Yung angel po, yung nag-alis nung stone dun sa tomb ni Christ. At what's funny is, yung mga, yung mga gwardya, supposedly, these were, a, these were brave men, trained for battle. They were prepared for any resistance. They were prepared for anyone na magtatangka na kunin yung katawan ni Christ. But you know what? They were not prepared for an angel. They did not expect that the angel will come and roll away yung stone. So kaya dun sa binasa natin, sabi dun, they sh- the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So siguro nanigas sila sa takot. So next po, But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into the Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So, eto pong angel, kinausap sila Mary Magdalene, yung women. Sabi nila, do not be, sabi niya, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus. At eto na yung good news. He is not here. He is risen. Eto na yung good news. At sabi niya, what is the command? Go and tell the disciples that He is risen. Sobrang importante po ng mensahe na to because God entrusted the message of the resurrection first to women. Bakit kaya sa mga kababaihan, no? I wonder bakit sa mga kababaihan niya sinabi or bakit sa yung mga kababaihan yung nakala, nakaalam, nakaunang nakakita ng empty tomb. And you know what? According to the theologians, no, two of the books na nabasa ko, isa kay Billy Graham, isa kay Lee Strobel, This is one of the clearest evidence that the resurrection really happened. Because during that time po, women don't have the same treatment as the women today. During that time, hindi pinapakinggan yung mga kababaihan. During that time, yung voice nila is like unimportant para sa mga tao. At lalo na, yung mensahe na, na meron sila ay hindi basta-basta. Ito ay mensahe na isang tao rose up from the dead. Isang tao that few days before, three days before, ay uh, namatay sa cross, then all of a sudden, rose from the dead. So sabi ng mga historians, no, if the, if the resurrection was a big lie, then the people would not even believe these women. Kung ang resurrection ay isang malaking kasinungalingan, hindi dapat sila maniniwala dito sa sinabi ng mga kababaihan na ito. Yung nga kasi during that time, hindi pa sila uh, wala pang same treatment sa ngayon. Eh. Ngayon kasi, uh, equal na yung tingin. No? Meron ng gender equality na tinatawag. During that time, wala pa. Kaya nga, this is one of the clearest evidence that the resurrection really happened. No? Ano po yung nangyari next? So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to, go to Galilee and there They will see me. Now, makita po natin dito, after seeing that the tomb was indeed empty, they did not uh, waste any time. Nagpunta na kaagad sila dun sa kinaroroonan ng mga disciples. You know, as children of God, the message of the resurrection is one of the things that we need to preach to others. And we need to preach it with urgency. The same manner kung paano yung puso or paano yung passion ng mga women na ma-share ito agad, madala ito agad sa mga disciples. Ganon din po tayo. Hindi lang tuwing Easter natin isinashare yung resurrection, no, but in our churches, in our light groups, we must share the resurrection. Now, this week po, 
since Holy Week nga, Monday pa lang, marami na ako nakikita ang mga posts about the cross, about uh, about Jesus, about the resurrection. So, it's normal po. But I think middle of the week, biglang sunod-sunod yung post sa Facebook. At ano yung post? About sa lugaw. No? Or, lugaw is essential. And uh, to be honest, hindi ko po alam yung totoong kwento, but I was amazed because few hours pa lang after that incident, eh naghahanap na siya sa social media. Yung iba nga ang bilis nakagawa ng mga meme at nakapost na kaagad sa social media. So naghahanap na, trending na kaagad. Bakit ko po ito sineshare? Listen, listen to this. If we can share the essentiality of Lugaw, then we can share or we can spread or make viral of the essentiality of the resurrection. Amen po. If the if yung lugaw nga, now I have nothing against that uh, that post no dun sa mga post na yon. But if we can make that post trending, then how much more the message of the resurrection. This is one of the foundations of our faith in Christ. Amen. Then balikan po natin yung yung story no. They went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. Sabi doon, with fear and great joy. Eto mga uh, mga babaheng to, hindi hindi na nila malaman kung ano yung mararamdaman nila. Matatakot ba sila? Magiging masaya ba sila? But look at what the response of Jesus. No, habang papunta na sila, while they were on their way, papunta dun sa kinalalagyan or kinaroroonan ng mga disciples, Jesus met them. At ang unang-unang sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, Rejoice! Rejoice! The message of the resurrection is not something that we must be afraid of, but something that must bring us into rejoicing and worship. Ano yung ginawa ng mga uh, nila Mary Magdalene? They bowed down at the feet of Jesus and worship Him. Not just as their, as their risen king, but as their sovereign Lord. Now, ito po kasi yung uh, dapat na, nating maintindihan. People, during that time, bowed down to only two person. Una, their king or their God. And guess what? Jesus is both. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus is the Lord. Now, nung, nung na-share ko yung Jesus before Pilate, isa sa mga sa- nasabi ko doon, many re- people are thinking that all religions are the same. But that is a lie. Now, many people worship Buddha or Confucius or Muhammad. But you know what? These people... Maybe they are great teachers or great or they are they were great teachers of morality. They have great teachings. Marami silang alam. But when they died, they remained dead. Only Jesus was publicly crucified, confined on a tomb, sealed with a stone, secured by a lot of guards 24/7, and on the third day was able to rise from the dead. Only Jesus was risen from the dead. Kaya nga nasabi ko, this is the foundation, one of the foundation of our faith. Sabi nga ng mga theologians, without the resurrection, walang Christianity. Because without the resurrection, Jesus would, be, would just be another teacher. But the resurrection proved that He is indeed God. He is indeed our Lord. Amen? Now, another evidence of the resurrection, the church and the disciples of Christ. Now, if the resurrection is a lie, then why did these disciples lay down their lives? Just to spread the message of the gospel. Oo nga, no? Kung ako, kung ako, one, 
if I'm one of the disciples and I was planning na lukohin yung mga tao or magkaroon lamang, magpauso lamang ng isang relihiyon, then hindi na ako darating sa punto na mamamatay para sa kasinungalingan na to. Etong mga disciples ni Christ, namatay sila by namatay sila just to spread the gospel. No, if they were just spreading lie, then hindi na sila darating sa point na ililay down nila yung buhay nila. May palaganap lang yung gospel. But for them, the message of the resurrection is not just a fairy tale. It's not just another story. Not just a childhood story. But it's, it is a real story. It really happened. No, maraming mga in history, hindi lang yung mga apostles ni Christ, maraming mga tao na, na, na namatay doing or spreading the gospel of Christ. Na, na, naalala ko, may, may isang kwento, isang kwento ng missionary. No, at itong missionary na to, gusto niyang mag-share ng gospel into one specific tribe. At sa dinami-dami naman ng tribe na mapipili, ang napili pa niya, yung tribe na ang mga nakatira, cannibal. So, kumakain ng tao. So, itong missionary na to, pumunta dun sa, sa lugar na yun, no, ma, iniisip niya, gusto niyang mag-share ng gospel, gusto niyang ma-share si Christ dun sa mga tao, ma, maramdaman nila yung love ni God. Sa alam niyo pong nangyari sa kanya, pinatay siya ng mga tao at kinain. You see, yung nagagawa ng isang tao na merong mensahe ng resurrection to even lay down to even sacrifice his life just for this message to reach out other people no? at hindi po doon natapos yung ministry niya praise God I think years or months after that a new set of missionaries came to that tribe and share the gospel. And they won that tribe. The same people who killed this person, the same people who ate him, laid down their lives, committed their life, lives to Jesus Christ. Praise God. Ito pong mga taong to, they laid down their lives for this message para mas maraming tao ang makapar- makapakinig ng mensahe ng, ng Lord. Now, right now, hindi naman natin siya kailangan. Alam mo yun, hindi naman tayo siguro darating sa punto na pupunta pa sa mga cannibal para i-share. Just a simple message. I-share mo lang sa kaibigan mo. You are actually sharing the love of God to those people. Ano po nangyari next? Dahil nga ayaw ng mga priest or ayaw ng mga elders na lumaganap or malaman ng ibang tao yung resurrection. Ang ginawa nila, lumikom sila ng malaking pera at binayaran nila yung mga gwardya para hindi magsalita. Sinuhulan nila yung mga gwardya para hindi magsabihin nila ninakaw ng mga disciple yung katawan ni Christ. They wanted to, dece- to deceive people to suppress the truth from them. But the message of the resurrection spread because of the disciples of Christ, because of these committed women. Amen. Now, let me share something. Uh, lastly, dun sa last part ng Matthew chapter 28, actually, isang buong topic dapat to, isang buong preaching dapat to, but i-share na rin natin the message of the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. We must not doubt the resurrection, not even for a moment. Maybe some of us here, kagaya ni Thomas. No, Thomas is one of the disciples of Jesus. At ang, ang ginawa niya, nung unang beses niya nakita si Jesus after the resurrection, hindi siya naniwala eh. Hindi siya naniwala. Sabi pa nga niya, hanggat hindi niya nakikita yung mark ng nail sa kamay ni Christ, hindi siya maniniwala. 
At alam niyo pong ginawa ni Christ, pinakita niya yung marka ng nail sa kanyang kamay at sa kanyang tagiliran. And after that, Thomas believed that the resurrection really happened. The doubting Thomas believed the resurrection. And after that, this Thomas, the, the, a person who doubted the resurrection, he, he became one of the greatest missionaries in Asia. Dahil siya mismo, he witnessed that Christ really risen from the dead. Tuloy po natin. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now this is the great commission. This is not the great suggestion. This is not the great idea. This is not a great option. But this is the great commission. It's not even a challenge wherein we have an option whether to do it or not. But it's a mandate of Christ to us not just for the pastors or not just for the leaders only, but to every children of God. And what is the Great Commission? To go and make disciples of all nations. Kung isasummarize ko po yung purpose ng ministry na to, yung purpose ng Light Youth Revival, that is to glorify God and make disciples of all nations. Maybe you're thinking, Make disciples of all nations? Mahirap yun. Bata ka pa, marami ka pang kakaining bigas. Maliit pa lang yung ministry nyo, kakaunti pa lang kayo. And you know what? That's true. Maybe that's true. Ako po ay 28 years old. And uh, ako yung pinakamatanda sa Light Youth Revival. Actually, dalawa pala kami. Kami ni Jayan. And our staffs are na young professionals na mas bata sa amin and students. But we have this goal. Our goal must be nothing less than the Great Commission. Our goal must not be less than the Great Commission. Our goal is to make disciples of all nations. I don't know kung gaano siya kahirap. I don't know kung hanggang kailan siya mat mangyayari. I don't even know kung mangyayari siya in my lifetime. But that is our goal. To make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Triune God, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is for the people to declare their faith in Christ, to declare into the world that they are dead to sin and alive in Christ and to teach them the commands of our Lord, to teach them the divine truth. Sabi nga po ni John MacArthur, discipleship is the passing on of the divine truth. More than the strategy, more than the method, what's more important is our content, the message, the gospel, the divine truth. Amen. And this is the promise of Christ, that He will be with us through the end of the age. Christ died on the cross. He was laid on a tomb. But the death could not hold Him down. He did not remain dead. On the third day, He rose again. This gives us hope of our future resurrection and glorification. Right now, we must bow down at the feet of Jesus Christ and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We must now go quickly and tell to the, tell to the world the good news. We must now go quickly and tell the good news into all the nations. One friend at a time, one person at a time. Amen. We must make disciples 
of all nations. We must, we must share the message of the cross. We must share the message of the resurrection. And we must do the Great Commission. You know, I thank God, I really thank God for our forefathers. The apostles, the disciples, the missionaries, theologians, apologists, pastors and leaders in the past. I thank God for them because they embraced this, this sacred calling of spreading the gospel. They did not give up. They laid down their lives. They made the necessary sacrifices just for the good news, just for the gospel to be spread to the, to the other people and to the world. Amen. Now, this is my time. Now, this is our time to do our part in the Great Commission. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, O God, for this message of the resurrection. This is the foundation of our faith. Father, salamat. Salamat, Panginoon. Because now, here we are and have this message that we can share to other people that really our God is alive. Our God is not dead. And Father, in this great commission, we pray that you will empower us. You will give us the courage. You will give us the strength, O God. You will give us the resources. You will encourage us. You will edify us. You will enable us and equip us into fulfilling this great commission. Lord, give us the heart. Give us the heart that is willing to sacrifice that is willing to go beyond our comfort zone and share the good news to others. Father, we thank you for this series. Really, now we understand more about your love. And thank you for encountering us in this series. Salamat, Panginoon, sa pagmamahal mo na ibinuhos mo sa cross upang kami ay maligtas. And thank you that you did not remain dead you rose up from the dead and take your position as our Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you for this night. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. May the Lord bless you and keep you.